your host, Marsha Torrance, for Just As. Today we have with us Gilders Club. Please hurry back and join us. I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Ask. Today we have with us Gilda's Club Program Director Kathleen Hardy and Susan Shanneman, Gilda's Club member. Hi, Kathleen. Hello, Hi, Susan. Kathleen. How are you doing? Good. Good. I'm glad you ladies came to see us today. And we normally start off with a group of questions in reference to um, disabilities and things of that nature, but we won't today. What I want to ask you, starting off with you, Kathleen, is can you give us the history on Gilda's Club and how you became involved? Yes, I certainly can. Uh, Gilda's Club uh, really began uh, with eight women uh, in 1993 who all were touched by cancer, either themselves personally or a member of their family. And they got together and really felt that this community needed a cancer support community or gathering place or meeting place for people uh, with cancer, men, women, and children, and their family, families and friends. And so they looked at different programs across the country and uh, decided to bring Gilda's Club here to the Detroit community. And uh, they chose Gilda's Club because Gilda Radner was born here in the Detroit area. And uh, she, uh, of course, had ovarian cancer. And in her memory, her husband, Gene Wilder, and Joanna Bull, her cancer uh, therapist, began Gilda's Club. Mm -hmm. And now there are 14 Gilda's Clubs across the country in different stages of development. And we uh, here just opened our doors on January 28th. And we okay. are the third Gilda's Club to actually open the doors. Wonderful. Now, how did you become involved with it yourself, Kathy? Well, I became involved because I've had three family members with cancer. And uh, they taught me a lot. And I realized the importance of not only support for the person with cancer, but for support for all our family. Mm -hmm. I'm one of 11. And, and uh, I think that we all could have benefited from support as we were going through that uh, with family members. And it wasn't here at the time. So to be part of actually bringing a Gilda's Club here is just really special to me personally. OK. Now, is Gilda's Club a nonprofit organization? Yes, it is. Uh, we're totally funded by generous donations of people in the community that uh, donate 5 or $10. Or um, our biggest fundraiser of the year is a family walk and block party. Uh, that we have. Uh, our next one will be October 4th, 1998. Okay. Uh, this will be our fifth uh, uh, walk and block party where we okay. raise a lot of money to, to uh, provide mm -hmm. for our program throughout the year. Now, where are you located exactly? We are located uh, at 3517 Rochester Road in Royal Oak, uh, okay. just north of 13 Mile Road. Okay. And we have a big, beautiful home that yes. Uh, was built in 1913 and we spent months and months renovating it okay. uh, to make it a real special place for people to come and and to meet and and to support one another okay now when you say family members is it any any person in the family that may have cancer or right it, it can be anybody who has cancer or if you have a sister or brother or parent with cancer even if they live in another part of the country you can come to Gilda's Club uh, for our program and so it's open to men, women, and children, families, friends, uh, because Gilda Radner used to say that when cancer affects one person, it affects the whole family. True. Whatever the makeup of that family is, uh, friends, even sometimes fellow employees at work, we're all affected when somebody we love and care about has oh, cancer. So much. Gilda's Club is open to, to, to everybody. Okay. What is your staff made of? What's the consistency? Well, we have uh, a very small staff. Uh, I'm the program director and fortunately have some uh, good uh, interns from Wayne State University working with me. Uh, we have a development director and an executive director. But uh, we're staffed mostly by volunteers. And I have over 100 volunteers that are working with us that help us uh, with anything from fundraising to uh, keeping up the house to uh, sending out our mailings. And we're just very pleased to have so many 
uh, people in this community that are donating their time. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have had a history of cancer, and mm -hmm. so this touches them in a, in a special way. In fact, Susan <laughs> here uh, uh, started out volunteering for us. That was uh, one of her initial interests in Gilda's Clubs, but, okay. but now through a course of events is a member, a full member okay. of Gilda's Club. Okay, so. well, Susan, can you give us some uh, history about yourself and how you became involved? Well, actually, it goes back to Ann Arbor in the 60s. I was in acting classes with Gilda Radner and kind of enjoyed following her comedic career. And uh, when I found out that Gilda's Club was coming to Detroit, I thought it would be a wonderful place to volunteer. But as life's turns of events, um, I was diagnosed with stage 4 non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and kidney cancer. And so I found myself not only being the volunteer, but also being the Gildas Club member who can benefit from the services there. Okay. So you find it um, more, more like a family type environment for you to be involved with uh, people at Gildas Club? I, I surely do. I can't speak enough about the comfort and support that we have there. And, you know, a lot of us are blessed with having the, the support of colleagues and friends and family, but there's an extra measure of support that comes from other people that have walked in your shoes that, that you just really can't describe, and that's what you can get at Gilda's Club. Okay, so what is your role exactly? I mean, do you actually mentor others, or what do you do? Well, actually, <laughs> um, I have a special title at, okay. at uh, Gilda's Club. I am the queen of Noogie Land, and we're very proud of our Noogie Land. It's our children's room, and okay. it's for children who have cancer or have a family member with cancer. Okay. And uh, I'm a middle school teacher, and our staff and our student council and my friends uh, made donations and, um, uh, to totally outfit this children's room. Okay. So we can't wait to see the first children oh, okay. playing and enjoying themselves and so feeling comfortable the, there. The Noogie Room. Noogie Land. No, oh, Noogie Land. <laughs> Noogie Land. Okay. That's from one of Gilda's we, we have sketches. To, yeah, I think I remember this. We, we remember have the, to, the Noogie mm, Marsha? Yeah, I think. That Gilda's uh, <laughs> Lisa Lubner mm -hmm, character mm -hmm. used to give Todd okay, on Saturday okay. Night Live. And okay. So that's what we call our, our children's area. And uh, Toys R Us has generously uh, helped us outfit it and uh, carpeted it and finished it off and and uh, then with the help of Susan uh, getting it all set up and okay. uh, so that the whole family can come to Gilda's Club and and uh, and the children have a special place too okay. uh, so we have supervised play and kids club which is uh, groups for children to get involved in and lots of activities. Now is there so. an age criteria? I mean I know a per cancer can strike anyone at any age but if there's like a, a child what would be considerable um, age for well, a child? Well, uh, any age child uh, up to uh, even a teen program. We have a teen program okay. where teens can get involved. And uh, we have several different aspects to the, to the total program at Gilda's Club. Uh, people can come to a weekly cancer support group, what we call the wellness group. We have separate groups for family members so that they can meet other family members that um, either have a father, mother, sister, brother, or a child mm -hmm. with cancer. Um, we also have workshops. We have meditation and yoga and healthy cooking and um, light exercise and um, all kinds of things to help people uh, kind of maintain balance in their lives okay. and to develop resources of how to uh, deal with cancer in their lives. Uh, we have lectures, uh, uh, special programs. We have one coming up called the Look Good Feel Better program which is for uh, women who've had chemotherapy and and uh, maybe are having difficulty with with um, makeup and, and okay. scarves and, and, wigs. and wigs and everything mm -hmm. else that that happens. Um, uh, we are having a program on fatigue coming up in April because that's uh, when a person has cancer. A lot of time, fatigue is is mm -hmm. a very much a concern. How do we get through work and and home okay. and family and and have cancer at the same time? So some of your your concepts for or development of um, services are actually ideals or situations that your your clients no cust or what are they called members. Members. Right. members members thank you <laughs> members. Right. So, okay, some of the ideas uh, from the members is how you develop the programs, more Abs or less. Absolutely. So when you said fatigue, you you know, if someone come to you and said, you know, you want to do a class on fatigue, yes. or, you know, if you notice a lot of us are really tired when we come, 
Right. Okay. That we really believe that um, I'm there as a facilitator and other people that participate in Gilda's Club on the staff, we just facilitate the prop the, the process. Really, we believe the members are the experts on dealing with cancer. Mm -hmm. And the magic of a Gildas Club is that if you take a lot of people who have cancer in their lives and you bring them together and they each have certain strategies and you bring that that kind of collective wisdom of the group and everybody enriches each, other, each other's mm -hmm. lives. So um, not only do you have your own resources, but you pick up other resources right. from other people and you're there for each other in a special way. And so we look to the members to say what, is, what it is mm -hmm. that's important to you. Uh, they give us the ideas on the workshops and lectures. Okay. Uh, we have art, music. Are there um, any nursing nurses on staff? That would no, do uh, we're not a medical facility. Okay. Uh, we're really a supplement to medical care. Okay. Uh, we have some of the finest cancer treatment centers in this area that, um, and we want to be there for the social and emotional support. Okay. Uh, we do have a library uh, with lots of resources and uh, we have internet access so people can uh, get on the internet and pull out different uh, information that might be helpful to them. But uh, basically we're not um, there for, okay. for any type of medical care. We're simply there for social and emotional okay. support, which is okay. pretty important when you think so of it. So no association with hospice and those are the programs? No, okay. uh, no, they're uh, certainly uh, on our medical advisory board mm -hmm. and uh, they have certainly uh, been so glad to see us there uh, to provide the social and emotional support that's so important. Uh, the cancer centers and hospitals and physicians have been so supportive of helping us get a Gildas Club open here in Detroit. Okay. Uh, but uh, we're providing something very unique and that is the to total cancer support community. Mm -hmm. So do you have like a hotline, a 24-hour hotline? Or well, something? we don't have a 24-hour hotline, okay. but we certainly are there uh, Monday through Saturday, um, Monday and Friday, 9 to 5, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 9 to 8 at night, and on Saturday, 9 to 3. And we'll expand those hours as we have more mm -hmm. programs that our okay. members are asking for. Uh, so uh, we do respond to people's calls. Okay. and. Uh, the way to get involved in, in uh, Gilda's Club would be for somebody to come to one of our new member meetings. Uh, we have them every Tuesday and every Saturday. Okay. And it uh, allows people in the community to come in and um, find out about Gilda's Club and take a tour and, right. and decide if they want to be a part of it. And it's totally free. Okay. Well, we have to come in and take a tour and, and we'd definitely like to be involved. Great. Uh, Susan and Kathleen, let's take a break and we'll be right back. What would make this 60-year-old woman reveal her breasts to someone she doesn't know? It would have to be for a very good reason, like getting a mammogram. A doctor told her the older she gets, the higher the risk of breast cancer. But early detection increases her chance of successful treatment. Getting a mammogram might just save her life, especially if you're over 50. Call the American Cancer Society. Early detection is the best protection. Hi, and welcome back to the second half of Just As. I'm your host, Marsha Florence. And our guest, if you're just now joining us, is Kathleen Hardy and Susan Shanneman from Gilda's Club. Uh, ladies, I have a few questions, but I want to ask you about the Gilda's Club brochure. And can we get a shot of that? This is a nice brochure, and it gives a, a map and everything. So um, in the brochure, basically, will it tell a person who's interested in finding out about Gilda's Club what right. they need to know in case they, you know, haven't came to present themselves yet. Exactly. It kind, of, it kind of gives an overview of our program and how to go about getting involved and um, uh, uh, tells a little bit about the philosophy. Okay. Okay. And how to become a member. Okay. Okay. And support group. Okay. And, and I like the fact that it has a map on the back and everything. Um, MedMax Health Providers. Yes, they uh, uh, paid for and uh, uh, the design and the printing of our brochure. And uh, uh, another one of our, our wonderful sponsors in this community has been Sears. Uh, they have all our appliances in the house are from okay. Sears, and they'll okay. pay for our grand opening. And so we have a lot of wonderful corporate sponsors okay. as well as private individuals. Okay. And I, I like this brochure, it's really nice. They did a now wonderful we, job. We have, a, and I noticed that the pen that you all are wearing are the same as the uh, design on the brochure, that's nice. Okay, now we have a calendar of events. So you have a monthly calendar that comes out? 
Every okay. month uh, we mail that calendar out to all our members and our volunteers so that they can um, know what uh, they can participate in. And Susan's participated in a few of them and maybe can tell you a little bit okay. about some of the events. That calendar is magnetic to my refrigerator as okay. we speak. And uh, I had an extreme pleasure to attend our first potluck dinner this past Tuesday evening. Mm -hmm. And it was a terribly rainy evening, but we were blessed with 68 members wow. and uh, their family members. The food was delicious, the camaraderie, the laughter. We had entertainment, we had guitar singing, and we had jazz singer and trumpeter. And the, just the sense of community and coming together. And I sat in the corner of the room and I thought, you know, I think this is what Gilda envisioned mm -hmm. when she had this idea. Okay, okay. Now with the schedule of events, you have uh, things like walking groups, uh, wellness group. What is the wellness group? Okay, well, uh, Susan is, was in a wellness group tonight, so I'll turn it over to Susan. Actually, we just came from a two-hour wellness group, and Kathleen was our uh, facilitator in the wellness group. And this is for people that have had a recent diagnosis of cancer mm -hmm. or are undergoing treatment at this time. And really any topic is okay for discussion. And it's so helpful to know that the fears, the things that you're feeling, the side effects of your treatment, that when you share them you find out, oh, you too, you felt that way too. And uh, it's very comforting. Okay, and can you give us a little insight on the alumni group? The alumni group, uh, G G at Gilda's Club, we're there for people with cancer, whatever the outcome. And as you know, with cancer, uh, many people are cured of their cancers. Uh, many people live for years and years with cancer. Um, my father uh, lived for almost 20 years with his cancer. But some people die of cancer. And our alumni group is for those people who've had a family member die. And uh, because we want to be there for people, whatever the outcome. So, okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So that's a very supportive group for um, persons who had loved ones who have passed on. That's correct. Okay. That's um, correct. Yeah. In, in the last couple of years, uh, one of my sisters had passed on from breast cancer, and uh, that is something that's probably well needed because you really weren't prepared and you don't know what to do. And uh, that's right. It's really a shock to the family when you know someone you love just you know goes on like that. And uh, well, you know th that's how it is. And so I'm sure that is a good group to, to uh, come and listen to. Um, let me know, how is the setting? Is it uh, like a sofa setting yes. you know, when you do this, or is it? Very comfortable. OK, OK. We Very have couches and uh, comfortable chairs and really a, a home. It's a big, beautiful home mm -hmm. that we've expanded uh, to include an elevator that goes to all three levels so that people, okay. it's totally accessible. And, and uh, uh, it's just. Uh, so warm and comfortable with kind of living room furniture all over so that people can be very comfortable and um, and in a few weeks we're going to be doing our outside our gardens and we have a lot of gardeners that are going to come in and help us uh, okay. uh, do the outside as well so inside and out uh, we just wanted a very cheery, warm, mm -hmm. comfortable, a place where people could come in, uh, like Susan can come in after work and and go into the kitchen and open up the refrigerator as if it were our own home. Okay. Uh, because it is truly um, a clubhouse for the members, and okay. so we want we them to have. We even have quilts that were made for us by the Great Lakes Quilting Club. Oh, all right. And uh, velour fleece throws and things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can literally come and curl up as if it's your own family room. Okay. This isn't, um, this isn't a, a public place. In fact, my son was helping me assemble the toys last mm -hmm. week. And when he was done, he said, Mom, I don't feel like we're in a public place. I feel like we're in our home. And that's what this is about, is to provide cancer support for people in a home-like setting. Most of the wellness groups in this area are very good, but they, they do take place in a hospital mm -hmm. setting. Mm -hmm. And to me, a hospital setting reminds me of where I have to go for chemo and doctor's appointments and shots and bad news. And okay. So I think this is just a, another element of comfort right. here. Okay. And you all can just talk about it anything at any time and feel like, like you're at home in your living room. That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. Now, Kathleen, you have an upcoming event. Can you give us some information on the event that you're doing? Uh, well, we have a couple things that are coming up. Um, our next potluck supper for 
for all the members. Uh, uh, in fact, we had 100 members come through our doors the first four days. So uh, we've had a tremendous response from the community thus far. But our next potluck supper is on March 17th, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful party. And uh, I'm sure we'll all be wearing green uh, uh, on that day. But uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. We do have a grand opening, uh, a three-day grand opening. Okay. Uh, it's going to be the end of April and, and the first two days of May. And it will be a time for the whole community to come and see Gilda's Club. Okay. And uh, we'll have music and entertainment and lots of great food and, and an opportunity for everybody to come and take a look and see what we are. Uh, because many of us, uh, in fact most of us, are touched by cancer at some time in our life. And we want everybody to know that we're there uh, for the people in the community when you need us. Okay, so it's like a three-day uh, open house? Uh, it's Right. It's uh, the, the first night is for our founding members. And they're, they're people that have reached into their hearts and their hearts and their pocketbooks and have given at least $500 to Gilda's Club to get us open. And, okay. and uh, that will end the end of May. And those people will be honored in a special way in the house. And so the first night is for them. And then uh, the next two days are open for the community. Okay. And uh, so um, you have a scheduled time for that event. Uh, yes, uh, on May first, it will be in the afternoon from about noon to five, and people can actually walk through and experience the program. I mean, experience okay. the singing and the art and the Wonderful. yoga and the meditation mm -hmm. and see Noogie Land and see some of the things that go on there. And then on Saturday, May second, uh, it'll be for the whole community uh, to come in and and bring their families and and just have fun mm -hmm. and and enjoy. Uh, Gilda's Club. So we're we're meeting every week to get ready for our grand opening. Uh, we wanted to open our doors January 28th and really respond to the members first, okay. and and then and let the party be a little bit later after we because people have waited a long time for us to open our doors. Okay. So we wanted okay. to get our program up and and then to celebrate and let the whole community come in. Well, this is definitely keeping uh, Gilda's dream alive. Uh, it's really a nice way. Yes, yeah, she she uh, said that cancer is the most unfunny thing in the world but uh, she was part of a cancer support community in California and she said she couldn't wait to get through the doors to be nourished by others and it helped her reclaim her gift for laughter mm -hmm. and her feeling of control over her life so hopefully we can do the same for a lot of people in this community okay I'm sure you will and we'd like to come by and oh, see everything. Oh please do Marsha, you know? you'll love it. Okay. You'll love it. Okay. Now are there any future plans or directions you ladies would like to tell us about in reference to Gilda's Club or yourselves? Actually uh, so many of my friends are anxious to volunteer there mm -hmm. and so it's not just a place that that I go but that they can come and support me I think sometimes family members and friends feel a little helpless when you have cancer. Right. They can't fix it, they can't cure you, That's right. but what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. And this gives those people a way to come together with you and be a part of your team and a part of celebrating life, not just fearing your disease. Okay. That's nice mm -hmm. to have all that support. We had one person in our walk last year who had 80 people walking with her to support her okay. and it was very touching to n for her to know that all these friends and family and people she worked with really wanted her to know we're behind you every step of the way so okay. um, uh, that happens in lots of ways through Gilda's clubs that people reach mm -hmm. out and and uh, find out what is helpful and what is not and that's okay. kind of a learning process. So if a person is traveling, you say they can go to another Gilda's Club in another state? Yes, uh, there's one in New York City, one in Florida. We opened third. Chicago opened just last weekend. Okay. And like I say, there's one in London, England, Toronto oh, that's wonderful. opening. Grand Rapids is going to be opening one. Okay. Uh, they're trying to search for a clubhouse right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there will be places all over the country that people can go. Uh, so we've had several people that go to Florida from here. and and have already touched base with the Gilda's Club there. So. Okay. So actually if someone goes to Florida or New York or whatever, they will be able to locate Gilda's Club there yes. and find comfort there just like if they do exactly. here. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Okay. Well, ladies, um, well, before we close, we'd like to thank you for coming. By all means, and we want to ask you to uh, give out your phone number. Okay. So we can definitely uh, make sure that if someone is interested in stopping by to volunteer. Uh, on the volunteer method, um, do they contact anyone in particular to volunteer or what, what should they do? Uh, they would ask for Kathleen Hardy, the program director, 
okay. and uh, and just say that they're interested in volunteering, and we'll send out an application. And uh, we have a training about once a month, and and we'll get them involved. Now, how long is the training? That's about a two-hour training, okay. and uh, kind of tell them about our philosophy and how they can help and find out where they want to uh, okay. contribute. Okay. So. Uh, and is there any set hours that one should contribute? Um, no, we ask uh, usually that they, um, if they're coming on a weekly basis, at mm -hmm. least about a two-hour minimum. But they might just want to contribute and help us already. We're starting to plan for our walk next fall, so they might want to be in our walk committee or might want to help with our grand opening. Uh, so really, they can help or as little or as, as much as they want to help because okay. we're really dependent on our volunteers for everything that we do. Okay, okay. Well, I'm glad. Our, I'm, I'm sure our public would want to know that so that way they can feel comfortable in giving you a call and you know, letting you know that they are interested. In, uh, same for children. Can children come in and, you know, someone? Yes, young, our, our, teens, our teens that get involved help, help us plan our parties. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a Boy Scout crew, troop that meets right across the street from us that's going to help us with our recycling. And, oh, okay. and uh, so um, we have really been so pleased by the generosity of the community, uh, uh, things that we needed for the house, mm -hmm. uh, money for our services and programs, and just people that have come and, and cleaned out our closets <laughs> and put our, uh, <laughs> emptied our boxes out. And uh, it takes a tremendous amount, and, and it's been wonderful. The support's been wonderful. You asked for our phone number. It's 248-577-0800. Uh, and uh, please call uh, for volunteer information or ask about our next new member meeting. Okay. Uh, we look forward to having you walk through our red door and, and joining us at Gilda's okay. Club. And they can call you and get on your mailing list to get Oh, a... absolutely. And we'll okay. send out uh, our brochure and send out our okay. monthly calendar and anything else that we can, can do to provide some information and okay. support. Okay, wonderful. Well, Kathleen Hardy and Susan Shanneman, I am so glad you ladies came by. Please keep us on your mailing list. Uh, anytime that you'd like to come back and join us, any update information you'd like for us to spread, let us know, and we'd be more than happy to uh, air your information on the future shows. But please um, keep us informed about the fundraiser. We'll definitely come by and see how things are going. Thanks, Marsha. Oh, it's been you, a Marcia. pleasure being here. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you always know, I'm Marsha Flores, your host for Just Ask. If you know anyone with a disability, don't be afraid to ask, just ask. Also, before we close, we have our mascot. We're still waiting for letters and phone calls from you all to help us name our mascot over there. Uh, his name so far is Mr. Polar Bear. However, we need for someone like yourselves to give us a call. Our phone number is area code 248-988-0250. That's our 24-hour production number. Give us a call or write to P.O. Box 19694, Old Redford. That's uh, Just Ask Talk Show. And let us know what name should we come up with our polar bear. Once again, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Ask. Thank you.